folks, I'm here at City College of New York where I'm studying physics for my Bachelor's of Science and where I have a perfect 4.0 GPA. Today, we're going to explore the third differential equation and we're not going to use the Leibniz refactoring method. Instead, we're going to use a different technique to completely break down a differential equation. Let's head to the Barry Science Lab and let's see how to solve it. Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. Today, we're taking a look at separable differential equations, which are yet another class of differential equations which are easily solvable if you know how to rearrange the equation. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my mic, I've got my chalkboard, and I've got my chalk. So how are we going to solve this differential equation? Well, the first thing you want to do is recognize the fact that it's separable. In other words, you can separate this equation into two types of variables. Variables of functions that are variables of y and functions that are variables of x. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move all the functions of y, such as this, to the left hand side, and all the functions of x, such as this, to the right hand side. And so if I do that, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy dx is equal to 1 over 2 root x. All right, well, how does that help me, you ask? Well, take a look at what I can do now. If I set this up just right, which I just did, I can integrate both sides with respect to x, dx. And so I have dx and dx cancel out, and I'm left with, on the left-hand side, I have an integrand of y, and on the right-hand side, an integrand of x. It works out magically. So on the left-hand side, Without simplifying just yet, I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy is equal to, I'm going to take out this constant factor of a half outside and integrate 1 over the square root of x dx. All right, so let's first try to concentrate on the right-hand side. It looks a bit easier. So on the right-hand side, I have the integral of 1 over the square root of x. That's going to be, if I rewrite this, if I want to rewrite this, I can rewrite this as x to the minus half. And remember, when you do the reverse power rule, you're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent. So add 1 to negative half, you get a half. Divide by a half, you get 2. And so now we're going to be left with, on the right-hand side, this simplifies out to half times the integral gives us 2x to the half. And don't forget the plus c, because there's a whole family of functions which satisfy this integral. And so half and 2 cancel out, so we're left with that, x to the half plus c. And I'm going to write that a bit nicer in the next line. Now, how are we going to deal with this? Well, this, if you remember, is a classic trigonometric substitution. We're going to replace, I'm going to write everything out on the right-hand side using my purple marker. We're going to say y is equal to sine of theta. And why are we going to do that? Well, check this out. Recall that the sum of the squares of sine and cosine of theta is 1. So if I have something like 1 minus y squared, and if I let y be sine theta, check out what I have. 1 minus sine squared theta is just another way to write cosine squared theta. And so if I make that substitution here, what am I going to get? Let me get my yellow marker back. So I'm going to be left with 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine theta squared. And instead of dy, what am I going to have? Well, I have to rewrite dy in terms of d theta. So let's go ahead, take the derivative of y with respect to theta. So dy d theta is simply going to be the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta, meaning that dy can be rewritten as cosine theta d theta. And so I can write here, instead of dy, I can write cosine theta let me write that on the top here, cosine theta d theta. Okay, so on the bottom, I, I simplify down to cosine theta, right? One square root of one minus sine squared theta is what? That's going to be cosine theta on the top divided by square root of cosine squared theta on the bottom. These two guys cancel out, right? And so I'm going to be left with just the integral of one d theta is equal to x to the half. I'm going to rewrite as square root of x plus c. And so here, the integral of 1 d theta is just theta is equal to root x plus c. But wait, what's theta in terms of y? Well, 
Let's check it out. You recall that y is sine theta, and therefore theta is no more than arc sine of y, right? So we can just replace theta by arc sine of y, arc sine of y. And that's going to equal the square root of x plus c. And, but, uh, and so now if I want to solve for y, what can I do? Well, I can multiply or I can take the sign of both sides. So if I take the sign of both sides, what will I be left with? I'll be left with y is equal to sine of the square root of x plus c. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your final answer. Thank you for watching this episode of Barry Science Lab, Differential Equations. We're going to check you out in the next one. Ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding Dude. equals learning. Excuse me. We believe anyone can learn Dude, anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.